Hey GearHeads, it's Jeff with Gear Report. Welcome to episode one of our new series, Show Us Your AR, where we show off your AR pattern rifles and pistols. Hello, it's Joe here from Joyrider TV, and you're watching Gear Report. In Show Us Your AR, we feed your AR fix with guns from around the world. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss our weekly episodes. If you'd like your AR featured in Show Us Your AR, all you need to do is send pictures or video of your AR, and I'll put it in a future episode of Show Us Your AR. All right, folks, let's dive in and look at one of my ARs. This show is going to be about your ARs, but for this inaugural episode, I thought I'd show you one of the Gear Report Review Build ARs and give you an example of the type of detail you can go into. Honestly, though, folks, if you want to send me some pictures or just a quick kind of pan video of your AR and a list of the parts, really what we're interested in in this series is what makes it interesting, what makes it special. It can be a plain Jane vanilla budget AR with a cool story like, you know, my granddad gave this to me right before whatever happened. I, I don't know. If it's interesting to you, feel free to send it in. If it's interesting to us, we'll share it with the world in Show Us Your AR. For now, let's dive into this review build. I'm gonna go into more detail than I expect you to just because we haven't really talked about this one publicly yet. So let's dive in and talk about the parts. So we started with a Gibbs Arms G4 PDQ billet AR-15 upper and lower receiver set. You may notice some interesting things here, like we don't have a brass deflector and the charging handle is missing because we have a right-handed upper has a left side non-reciprocating charging handle. I think that's pretty cool. Uh, they call it the PDQ set because we have our normal bolt release catch here on the left, but then on the right hand side, we have an additional bolt release that you could actuate with your trigger finger. So that gives you a little bit of extra options there. On the front, we have the Frontier Tactical Warlock Multi-Caliber System. Uh, I'm gonna call this a takedown adapter. So what Frontier Tactical says is this is to allow you to put a variety of different calibers on one AR. So you can build out the back portion of the gun however you want and then have a 300 blackout barrel and a 223 barrel, for example, that you switch out. So maybe you've got a short barrel for some sort of tactical use and then a longer barrel for hunting. So by unscrewing, you can actually take it off. And now with the back end folded, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Look how small this is. It's like a baby. All right, I think that's pretty cool. So we just drop this back in here. Get this indexed. There we go. Now it's locked. Good. Okay. Make sure if it doesn't fall off, it's locked. Excellent. Got it right. So that's the Warlock multi caliber system. And under it, we have a Radical Firearms 8.5 inch 300 blackout barrel. And you see an SD Tactical Arms titanium muzzle brake with the external threading for our Form 1 titanium silencer hiding under a Coltac silencer cover. So yeah, it's a mouthful, a lot to talk about there. In between all of this, you'll see a seven inch aluminum M-Lock thin profile handguard that came from Frontier Tactical with the MCS Warlock system. On the bottom, on this M-Lock attachment piece from Tyrant CNC, we've got what they call their mod foregrip. You can see how you can kind of hold it in here like this. It gives you a nice vertical piece here if you need to index up against a wall or something. You know, you can put it right up against there. Um, for me, with my big hands, if I try to hold it in front like this, I get a little bit of pressure right here. So I'd actually like a slightly larger version of this, but overall, very well built, solid, doing well so far. On top, you'll see that today we're running a Sightmark Wolverine FSR. It's got a 28 millimeter objective lens on this red dot with no magnification. And what we ran initially on this uh, early days before Sightmark asked us to review that was this Vortex Optic Spitfire AR, again an unmagnified red dot. And it worked great, but you know we were asked to review the Wolverine and we've been beating the snot out of this rifle. It'd make a great review platform, so we agreed to put that on there to, to wrap up our testing. 
So it's moving to the back. I mentioned that we have the folding stock back here. So what is this? If you said law tactical folder, you are wrong, unfortunately. Um, this is much better, in my opinion, from Deadfoot Arms. They call it the modified cycle system. And it's modified, it's not just a folding adapter, modified cycle system. So it still cycles even when folded. You can do mag dumps in this with it folded like this. You can't do that with the Law Tactical adapter. You get one shot if you have a round chambered and that's it with the Law. This has a shorter bolt carrier, uses the standard bolt, a custom combination of springs with a little mini buffer built in, and then this short extension tube sticking out the back, plus the hinge with a little lock under here. And that allows you to have a pretty compact package. On the back, you'll notice that the tail hook Mod 1 this is the aluminum version of the tail hook pistol brace that folds down. And of course, it's on a Damage Industries buffer tube that's specially made for the pistol. And uh, you can look at the description for more details on this stuff. But the tail hook brace, far superior to any other pistol brace I've seen in that it actually works and helps to stabilize the AR. Like we have a pivot point here at my hand, and that is actually holding it in place. I don't have to strap it on like RoboCop. This is actually functional. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you right now, folks, every other pistol brace out there is silly, okay? This is actually functional and I love it. So when we have this hooked up, we have a little quick disconnect fitting on the Deadfoot Arms MCS, the back of that adapter, and I'll clip my Fox Den Tactical Paracord single point sling in here and I really like this, and it makes me sad. I, I put this on to show you because I heard that Fox Den Tactical, the owner, has said, you know what, I'm ready to go do other things with my life. I'm tired of making paracord slings, so he's getting out of the business. So thanks for all you did. You made great stuff. We really appreciate you and your company, and I hope you enjoy whatever your next endeavor is. All right, folks, let me know what questions you have about this. I think I've covered everything except, you know what, I don't think we talked about the trigger. So we have a Hyperfire uh, 24 series trigger. This is the 3G is what they called it. I noticed Hyperfire has changed their naming convention. I'm not sure what they call this trigger today. If you know, let me know. Uh, it's a little bit light for this type of rifle, a three gun trigger like that with a lighter pull weight. I typically wouldn't put in a duty type gun, but with this little profile, this is more of a defensive use type configuration. I'd like a little bit heavier, but uh, that's what's in it for now. Probably gonna switch that out pretty soon. The pistol grip that we had on here initially was from Strike Industries. It was their Patriot Tactical Enhanced Pro AR pistol grip. Really liked it, but then Unique ARs asked us to try this Unique Grip, they call it, which is kind of neat. It's got this screw that goes up through the middle. Let me see if it is loose enough. Nope, it's too tight. I tighten it down as you should with a big screwdriver, flathead screwdriver here on the bottom once you get it adjusted the way you want. The way it works is you loosen it and then you squeeze front to back and get the grip into the shape that you want and then you tighten it from the bottom to lock it in place and you see you get a custom shape. It was completely squared off on each side before and now that I custom fit it to my hand uh, and that works pretty well. It, it has a little bit of play in it uh, I could probably tighten it a little bit more to, to lock it down slightly better, but it's got a nice little beaver tail on the back to give a little bit of extra room. Uh, with my long fingers and big hands, look at the size of those, right? Um, it helps get me back away from the trigger a little bit so that my finger pad placement on the face of the trigger is appropriate. So I like that. Let me know if I missed anything, folks. I believe I've talked about everything here. So I appreciate you having a look uh, top to bottom, front to back of my AR. If you'd like your AR to be featured in Show Us Your AR, then just send me an email with landscape-oriented pictures or a link to download video of your AR, and I'll put them on Show Us Your AR. I hope you've enjoyed looking at my AR in North Carolina. Where do you think we'll go next? If you've already sent in pictures or video and you haven't been featured yet, please don't worry. I'm working through them in the order they came in, and your AR will be featured in an upcoming episode. Every week we'll release a new episode of Show Us Your AR, 
please make sure you're subscribed so that you'll see those new episodes as they come out, as well as episodes of our other Show Us series. So we have Show Us Your Hammock. If you're into camping hammocks, Chris, our camping editor, is going to take you around the world showing you all the best camping hammock setups out there. We've also got Show Us Your Humvee. All right, if you like military vehicles, Show Us Your Humvee post every Wednesday evening. So check that out. And of course, Show Us Your AR is going to post every Friday evening. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. That's it for now. We'll see you at the range. Mm -hmm.